So how was your week? <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure and I'm, I feel like I'm preaching to the clergy here tonight and I don't have to worry about getting any booze, but um, I'm sure you know we're on the right side of history, all of us and what we're doing. Right? Yeah. The, only, the only question is when history catches up. So just for what you're doing and keep keep posting and keep saying and don't let it get down and don't go and debase. Just talk about the positive things about our role in Pittsburgh of being part of a global initiative to help people. And keep doing it. Keep doing it. I can tell you, I had the honor of meeting face to face with the mayors of Athens, Greece, Ramallah, and uh, Palestine, and Amman, Jordan. And they're in a crisis. And they're, they're worried about what's going to happen in their cities and what's going to happen in their countries with civil war over the amount of Syrian and Iraqi refugees who are coming in. I believe in Jordan now, it's one out of every four people in their country. And the same type of behavior and uh, insistence on no more and get them out is happening there. And it's happening throughout Europe. And if we think about it, we each can play a small role and we can each diffuse a situation that if we just let stand alone, we're going to be sending military troops in. And the situation will just be worse instead of addressing it head on and dealing with it the way that we can. And then there's the whole humanity issue of it, right? Yeah. So, look, we have something amazing happening in Pittsburgh by being able to bring people in from around the world. And not only that, but enhancing our own city through art. And that's what we celebrate. And I jokingly was saying earlier, um, where'd he go from Maria? Oh, Yaka. Yaka. And he was saying that Pittsburgh is now my home. And I said, yeah, you know why? Because we're Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. <laughs> So somebody in this room, get him a terrible towel, stat. <laughs> Let's welcome our new friend. And that's what we want to do. Because this city is in transition, but it's always been in transition. It was in, in transition in 1921 when it was becoming an industrial giant on a global scale and on a global map when my grandfather came over and they told him, go back. Because at that time, the others were the Italians. And before that, it was the Germans and the Irish. And before that, it was the French and the Native Americans said, go back. <laughs> so we just have to understand that that history is always a part of it. And if we don't make the changes that are necessary, we just repeat the same problems once again. I, uh, I want to leave you with the story of Pittsburgh history. And some of you may know it. Uh, we had a mayor elected in 1850 named Joe Barker. Does anybody know the story of Joe Barker? A few people? So Joe's probably the most interesting politician I've ever heard of in my life. I used to sit in council, and if you sit in council for 20 years, and Kevin Ackland still goes, I don't know how you did it. I couldn't stay there for 20 minutes. How did you stay there for 20 minutes? Well, you look up at the beautiful architecture that Henry Hornbostel designed, and you look, oh, look, there's Joe Barker, 1850. He was the mayor. I wonder who his story is sitting right below me. Give me inspiration, Joe. And I find out, Joe Barker was a preacher. And he used to preach right where the convention center is right now. And what he preached was hate. He was preaching against the immigrants who were coming and destroying Pittsburgh. The Catholics. The Irish and the German Catholics. And his, his speech got so terrible that he was imprisoned. And the mayor threw, gave him uh, a sentence, the judge put him in jail, and the people of Pittsburgh said, hey, you know who would be a great mayor? <laughs> Joe. So while he's in jail, they run him on a write-in ticket, and they had to create a party to have him run on. So the party they created, because they weren't too subtle back then, was the anti-Catholic party. <laughs> And he won. So he's still in jail. He's waiting for his, the governor to pardon him. They give him a day to go get sworn in. They, they bring him out. They swear him in. And realize, you know, everything's by horse and carriage. 
the, the pardon doesn't come. So after the, he gets sworn in as mayor, they take him back to jail. <laughs> and then the pardon comes and he serves. And the first thing he does, fires all the police officers, <laughs> makes his friends the police force, which starts a little bit of a war in the city of Pittsburgh. The next thing he does, arrests the bishop of the Catholic Church for an illegal sewer tap-in at Mercy Hospital. And while the bishop is in jail, the Catholic Cathedral, which stands today at the Union Trust Building, if you ever look at the top, it looks like a church is on top of it. That's where the first Catholic Cathedral stood. Burns to the ground. But the new police can't find out who did it. That's our history. It's not that different than the dialogue on Facebook right now. And we have to remind people, that was you before you're pointing the finger at them. Joe tried to run for office again, was never reelected, served one year as the mayor of Pittsburgh, and was found slightly after the Civil War decapitated on railroad tracks right here in the north side. <laughs> One of the most interesting stories of politics, right? <laughs> but a lesson to us all. Let us be the ones that make the change. Let us be the ones that be, are the welcomers. Let us be the ones that remind all of us around us, even those that are pointing and saying no, that we're better than that, and that we can be the example for the rest of the world, and our enemies will stop hating us because we can show love and compassion. Thank you, folks. Good to see you.